Good afternoon, Pastor David. How you doing, John? Welcome, everybody, to Unfiltered. Uh, you know, Pastor, we had an amazing Easter season. Our Good Friday service was, the worship was amazing. We had the cardboard testimonies uh, where people came up and they, on one side of the cardboard, they shared what they were before Christ and then they flipped the cardboard over and mm. what they are in Christ now. And mm. very, uh, very touching and very moving to see the transformation power of God's grace. And then on Sunday, it was just the highlight of everything. We celebrated the resurrection of Christ and, and the worship was anointed and spirit-filled and the message you gave was just very touching and it just made the whole Easter season, if we called it that, just an, uh, just a very uplifting, spiritual, anointed, spirit-led time in the Lord. It was great. And, uh, and your messages on Good Friday and on Easter Sunday, just, it, it just one of those things. And so I wanted to ask you today, in the light of all the things that are going on, and even in this dark world, we celebrated Resurrection Sunday, Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. And so my question to you, Pastor, is why does the church matter? <laughs> why does the church matter? Celebrating Resurrection Sunday, Good Friday, and, and why does the church matter? That's an interesting question to ask. I mean, imagine, imagine a world without light. Imagine a world without taste. You know, we would be in darkness and we would be living in corruption because light obviously dispels darkness and and Jesus calling us the light as well as the salt would be saying that that we have the responsibility of revealing the truth through Christ who is the light of the world as well as the the ministry of of, um, of being a preventative against the decay of sin. And so why is the church important or why does it matter? It's because Jesus said you're the only light and you're the only salt in this world. And so he, he gave to us a, a commission to take a message that deals with the, the evil of mankind. You know, I'll give you an example very quickly. We're going through the book of Romans this uh, Wednesday, tomorrow, we'll be looking at Romans chapter three, where Paul in chapter one has stated that, that the Gentiles, the, the non-Jews, the Gentiles are all under sin. Then in chapter two, up to verse 17, um, well, in verse 17, he's, he makes it very clear that he's speaking to the Jewish nation. And then in chapter three, he continues on into chapter three, right around verse nine. And he brings a, a, a word of, of uh, exposure of the Jews' sinfulness. And so the Gentiles in chapter 1, the Jews in chapter 2 into chapter 3, are brought into um, a position of being um, rightfully judged. And then in chapter 3, following at verse 10, he continues on by making the case that both Jew and Gentile, all humanity, whether you have had the opportunity to have the law of Moses given to you or whether you have, have just spoiled your opportunities of knowing of God through your conscience and creation, all humanity, both Gentile and Jew, he says are under, under strict judgment. And so the church is necessary because we declare the light. The church is necessary because we are used by God as a preventative against the decay. And so when we gather on Easter Sunday and we celebrate the reality of the Savior who loved us and paid for our sins and bought us through his blood and demonstrated himself to be the Son of God through his resurrection, well, why is the church necessary? It's because we prevent evil and expose it and because we help people to know the truth and the grace of God and a word that brings um, uh, freedom to the sinner. Paul in 2 Corinthians 5 says it in this way. He says that we have received the gospel of reconciliation, he says in chapter 5. And he, 
he says to it that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And he said he has given to us, entrusted to us, the message or the gospel of reconciliation. Mm. And so the word reconciliation is a word that speaks of a cessation of enmity between two warring parties and that the gospel is God's declaration of peace with a, a demand for an unconditional surrender to the one who's victorious, Jesus dying on the cross and all, an unconditional surrender to this one who is the Lord of the universe. And so that ministry of reconciliation is what we as Christians are supposed to be uh, you know, living out. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what the church does. So it's not just gathering together to watch some celebrity pastor bounce around the platform with great energy and enthusiasm. And it's not just to come and hear some trained singers um, put on a performance and then to have a donut afterwards with some people or go to your family's house. It's, it's a deeper thing than that. It's, it's the presentation of the fact that we can have peace with God. Mm who right, rightly is going to judge the world of sin. And, but we can have peace with him because Jesus, when it's been said like this, Jesus on the cross with one hand stretched out in one way, the other stretched out to the other, with one hand is holding the hand of the Father and the other hand is holding the hand of a sinner. And so Jesus is reconciling us. It's through the blood of Christ, he, he who is our peace. Um, we celebrate that in that had Jesus died, remained in the grave, then we, Paul said, of all people would be most miserable. Why? Because we believe and teach that God raised Jesus from the dead. Right. So why did we celebrate and why do we celebrate? We do so because we have a message of reconciliation. And why is the church important? We're the only ones who have it. Amen. And that was evident by the people that came forward on Sunday Quite a number. to uh, give their lives to Christ. And that's what it's all about. Amen. And it's that reconciliation. I, I like how you explain that. Mm -hmm. God in one hand, the sinner in the other. Mm -hmm. And never seen it like that. And so I, I hope we're able to, con and we do. It, it's not just a one thing, once a year type of thing. It's it, every day. It's every day. Mm -hmm. And it's important for the church to understand it's not just Christmas and Easter. Mm -hmm. It's an every day where the gospels mm -hmm. is 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 there for everybody every single day. Amen. That's what and we're called to do. We walk worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We live out the gospel of Jesus Christ. We give out the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it, it, is, not, uh, it is not something we only celebrate once in a while. It's something that we, we celebrate every day. Amen. And as we wrap up here, Pastor, I'm keeping an eye on time. Good. I uh, just want to invite our friends and family to come join us on Wednesday evening, tomorrow evening, yes. as you mentioned, you're starting Romans chapter 3, yeah. and it's a great opportunity to invite your friends and family to come out and join us and uh, and continue the gift that we have in the resurrection of, of Christ. And uh, and then Sunday, we have our services at 8.30 and 10.45. It's no longer 11. Mm -hmm. It was just for that extended time of worship and invite you guys to come join us 8.30 and 10.45 on Sunday as we're going through Mark. Mm -hmm. We're and, almost going to conclude it. We're very close to it. And so uh, we look forward to that. I mean, it's been yeah, a great study. I do. And, <laughs> and so we thank you guys for tuning in. Pastor, thank you so much for your time. And remember, not only do we as the church matter, but the church matters. Church matters and, in uh, ways. And we're that light in this dark world. Amen. So thank you guys for tuning in. Pastor, thank you again. God bless you guys.